We welcome you to Trinity Lutheran Church, St. Joseph, Michigan. We're delighted that you are joining us on this online worship service. May the Lord bless you and keep you in his care. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the people with equity and guide the nations upon the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty, eternal God, in the word of your apostles and prophets, you have proclaimed to us your saving will. Grant us faith to believe your promises that we may receive eternal salvation 
Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for this day is recorded in Exodus chapter 19. The people of Israel set out from Rephidim and came into the wilderness of Sinai, and they encamped in the wilderness. There Israel encamped before the mountain, while Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him out of the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the people of Israel, You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples. For all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. So Moses came and called the elders of the people and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. And the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is recorded in Romans chapter 5. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since, therefore, we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men, because all sinned. For sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is now counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth and 10th chapter. Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. While he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And he called to him his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every affliction. The names of the twelve apostles are these. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother. James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon, the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out instructing them, 
Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and proclaim as you go, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. You receive without pay, give without pay. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. and peace be yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. God's word for us is the gospel reading from Matthew chapter 9. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. So far our text. Our text says that Jesus saw the crowds and had compassion on them. Compassion is a precious commodity that seems to be in short supply in our world today. As we read the news, countless examples can be found where a little compassion would have gone a long way and made all the difference. Whether it is a story about child abuse and neglect, or a story about political campaigning, or a story about race relations, and any number of examples could be cited. We don't have to read the news, however. We can look at our own lives and see lack of compassion as we consider our neglect of the poor, 
or our criticism of co-workers, or our ridicule of family members. The book, Compassion, a Reflection on the Christian Life, there is a, an account of a story of the late Senator Vice and Vice President Herbert Humphrey. The Senator was visibly caught off guard when asked how he felt about compassion in politics. His response, gentlemen, look at this pencil. Just as there is an eraser on one end, and it's a very small part of the pencil, it is used only when there is a mistake. So is compassion, only called upon when things get out of hand. The main part of life is competition. Only the racer is compassion. And it is sad to say, but in politics, compassion is just part of the competition. What can be said of politics can also be applied in other areas of life. Competition, getting ahead of the other person, whether in sports, at work, or at home, leaves many people bloody, battered, and bruised. Through the words of our text, Christ assures us of his compassion for us in our highly competitive world. He also bids us to treat others with compassion. Jesus recognizes our need. We are like sheep without a shepherd. We too are harassed as the crowds are described in our text. Harassed is a word meaning worried, annoyed, troubled, and it describes many in our world today. Various circumstances in our world annoy and trouble us. For example, there are worries in the workplace, financial concerns, paying bills, preparing for retirement, giving our children education, and racial relationship problems all harass us with concerns. In Greek, this word describes the condition of sheep that have been caught in the brambles or fallen on the rocks and are scraped up and badly bruised. It certainly describes a lot of people today who are physically, emotionally, or spiritually abused by others or by life itself. We are also helpless, as the crowds were described in our text. Helpless is a term used to describe animals lying on the ground, unable to get up. Eventually, they die of starvation or fall prey to predators. This word applies to people who are let down, dejected, downcast, or abandoned. And more generally, to all who face problems that they are unable to fix. For example, the wife who sits by the bedside of her terminally ill husband. Parents trying to cope with rebellious children. Laid off workers unable to find a job. It could also include all of us who are forced into isolation or social distance because of COVID-19. Like a wolf preys on sheep separated from the flock and weakened by starvation and fatigue, Satan preys on people who are without a shepherd. Jesus not only knows our needs, he has compassion for us. He loves us. It is his love for his creation that moved him to have compassion on us. He is not sympathetic because we have been treated unfairly. For in our sin, we deserve nothing better. Since he loves us, however, he responds compassionately. He even suffered for us. His suffering and death on the cross is the supreme proof of his great compassion. He carried our sorrow, strife, and sin, taking upon himself, experiencing the extreme consequences of our sin. 
and our brokenness in this world. He still suffered for us, despite our undeserving and unappreciated attitudes. Jesus continues to be our helper, the helper of the helpless, the savior for the stranded, the rescuer for the lost, and the companion of the lonely. He says, cast your cares on me, for I care for you. Jesus feels with and for us. Thankfully, Jesus is not as uncaring and selfish as we often can be. In an incomprehensible way, the Almighty God actually cares about each one of us. He knows us all by name, even the number of hairs on our head. He feels for us and with us. Jesus, as a flesh and blood man, identifies with us completely. The writer to the Hebrews says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with us in our weakness, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Not only does Jesus know our needs, he also responds compassionately to them. He did this by teaching with his word. Our text says, Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom. He taught the people to understand how the Old Testament promises and prophecies were fulfilled in him. He is the Messiah, the Savior of the world. A young boy once approached his father to ask, Dad, why does the wind blow? To which his father responded, I don't know, son. Dad, where do the clouds come from? I'm not sure, son. Dad responded, Dad, what makes a rainbow? No idea, son. Dad, do you mind me asking you all these questions? Not at all, son. How else are you going to learn? The truth we need to know, that we need to learn, regarding our salvation, will not come from the wisdom of man. It must come from God. Jesus still teaches with his word through his church. Pastors and teachers of your church Use the same life-giving word today to instruct and train you and your children. This is a wonderful place to receive a solid moral foundation and to learn the values that are important to God. And most importantly, to learn the way of salvation in Christ. A legend tells of a young lad who was picking flowers on a hillside. When he picked one special flower, a large cave opened up before him. He walked in and found the place filled with precious gems. He laid the magic flower down on a rock and began filling his pockets with those precious stones. Thereupon he started to walk out of the cave. A voice said to him, Don't forget the best. But he failed to heed the warning. The cave closed behind him, and the gems in his pocket turned to ashes. Don't forget the best. The best is the message of Christ. It alone has promised us that we have hope in this present life and for the life to come. As this text tells us, Jesus went about preaching about the kingdom. He announced the kingdom of God was at hand in himself. He was the king who had come into the world. He announced the favor of God for all men and a kingdom that would embrace all people. He preached the good news about new hope and joy in this kingdom. It would not be obtained by might or fight, but by the willing obedience 
and the sacrifice of a Savior. Jesus established this kingdom of God through his work. The ultimate compassion was the shepherd laying down his life for the sheep. Jesus made the way into the kingdom of God by forgiving our sin and reconciling us to the Father. Jesus, the shepherd, was also the lamb of sacrifice. With his holy, innocent blood shed on the cross, Jesus purchased our salvation. He still proclaims that same gospel in the church today. Our message is the same today as it has always been. Jesus Christ and him crucified. Nowhere else are you going to hear this life-changing gospel. You won't read about it in the news. You won't see it in your own life or in that of others. But your church is a wonderful place to hear the saving message of Christ. Our text tells us, not only did Jesus proclaim the kingdom of God, the good news, but he also healed every disease and sickness. And Jesus still heals today. He is concerned with our physical needs. He has redeemed us both in body and soul. He healed the sick, the blind, the lame, the leprous. He raised the dead. They are evidence of the power of God over life and death. And Jesus healed the soul. His greatest concern was for the spiritual lives of the people. Whenever he healed the body, he also healed the soul. Jesus gave people something to believe in, to hope for. And he still does today. Body and soul, he is our redeemer. He uses us to care for the physical needs of others. And he provides for ours and our family's needs. Whenever we see someone in need, we are to recognize their greater need of a savior. And how they hunger and thirst for real and lasting hope. And as we help them in their physical needs, we can share with them Jesus. He is the one working in our world. Wherever people of God reach out in love to the hurting, the destitute, the lonely, or the afraid. Two men were in the middle of a lake in a rowboat when it sprang a leak. As one man who was sitting by the leak was furiously bailing water, the second commented, I'm sure glad the hole isn't on my end. Many people will not get involved in problems of others unless they realize that they are directly affected. God's word shows us that we are all affected by the problems of others. What's more, Christ has compassion for us all. Not only to come for us, but also because he wants to show us how to be compassionate to each other. Showing the care of Christ does not necessarily mean heroic actions. Jesus said, whatever you do for the least of these, you have done also for me. The harvest is plentiful and in need of compassionate servants of Christ. Amen. In the peace of God that passes understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. We confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Part of our worship is giving our offerings to the Lord, and we are very grateful for your generous support and your gifts given for the sake of the gospel proclaimed in the kingdom of God. And we encourage you to continue to send your gifts through the mail 
or to use our electronic fund transfer or on our giving app. Either way can be a great help to us. Let us pray. For the church and her witness of hope to the world, that in every city, village, and home across the globe, the voice of the Lord may be heard by the faithful preaching of the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who labor in the fields of the Lord today, and for the Lord to raise up laborers for his harvest fields, that their work may be blessed, and they may be protected and defended against the enemies of the kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who live under the flag of our nation, for those who govern it, and for those who cause peace and justice to abound, that we may all be given grace and freedom to serve the Lord honorably in accord with his word. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and hungry, the homeless and unemployed, the oppressed, that the Lord would grant them mercy, that we may help to relieve their suffering and want, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who know the riches of the Lord's blessings, that they may cheerfully return to the Lord the tithes and offerings of grateful hearts and give generously to the many agencies of the church working to help those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O blessed Lord, through Moses you called a people to yourself, and from them you delivered up your own Son to be our Savior. By his sufferings and death, he has redeemed us sinners from our sins, and by his resurrection, he has released us from the fear of death. Help us to live as your own people, doing the good works for which we were created, and praying with confidence the petitions and supplications of our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.